The Day of the Rope by Devin Stack Chapter 18 Eve stared at the curtain dividing the hospital room and listened in fury as her neo-Nazi roommate spouted his disgusting propaganda to his racist fans on the phone. She couldn't believe that the hospital was subjecting her to this abuse. She had complained to everyone, and they all had told her the same nonsense about budget cuts. She had threatened to sue and even throw a tantrum in her latest physical therapy th session, but the sexist therapist just had told her to tough it out. Tough it out, she screamed at him. You try recovering when you're sharing a room with the next Hitler and then tell me to tough it out. Typical of men to stick together like that. Even if it meant tolerating Nazis. Anything to make women look emotional and irrational. The therapist wasn't even white. Didn't he understand that people of color, like him would be the first sent to the camps, maybe even worse. While researching the evil incarnate on the other side of the curtain, who was currently ranting and raving about how vital hate speech was to their cause, she had found a few groups online ran by the resistance group Anifus. They had mountains of evidence against this Wayne Thomas person that he was actually working with Russian agents. The Russians had been funding his whole operation and even faked his so-called accident to get people to feel sorry for him. Now he was taking orders from Moscow it was only a matter of time before they took over the country and suspended elections so they could exterminate all the undesirables. It was history repeating itself. Russian hit squads had already started executing essential philanthropists and thought leaders across the country. The media was, media was wholly taken over by the Russians, so they weren't reporting any of it. Eve had found this hard to believe at first, but one of the resistance groups she had been participating in had compiled lists of humanitarians and professors that had been murdered or who had disappeared. The list also included a few progressive journalists Probably the ones that the Russians couldn't threaten or bribe. They died mysteriously in the last three months. A few Antifus members had been killed while standing up to Nazis that tried to spread their hate speech. Violence was erupting at all of the clan rallies that had been popping up across the country as women the gender advanced and people of color led the fight against fascism in response several cities had banned public gatherings altogether and social media companies were finally starting to ban hate on the platforms it was about time they did something. Eve felt so helplessly stuck in there while the fight of her generation was being waged outside. After participating in several chats with associ associated with the Anifus groups on her phone, she had let it slip that she knew where the infamous Wayne Thomas was located and was willing to help the resistance. At first they didn't believe her and called her a LARPer, whatever that meant. So one night she waited until Wayne had fallen asleep and then after some painful maneuvering snuck a picture of him with the camera on her phone. 
She shared the photo with the group, but even then, some thought the photo was faked. They wanted more proof. So in response, she interrupted one of Wayne's Hitlerian speeches. No fascism, no KKK, no white supremacist USA. She had shouted over and over again until he ended the stream. Everyone believed her now. She had done this now a few times. The problem was that the fascists on the internet and their Russian bot accounts had gone right to work making her look like some type of lunatic. A lunatic? For fading, hating fascism. What was this world coming to? The Antifa's groups online advised her to stay quiet for now because it was more important to have her there to keep an eye on Wayne. She was their deep cover agent and they feared that if she kept disrupting his streams that somehow it would make him look sympathetic. This was something he very much disagreed with. But they urged her to be strong so that the hospital wouldn't move her to a different room. They probably wouldn't have used this reasoning with her had they known that's all she really wanted in the first place. But she had now felt as if she had a purpose. She could participate in the war against Russian fascists trying to take over her country. I will make this sacrifice for the resistance and for women and for people of color and all of our LGBT plus and gender diverse allies everywhere, she had told the group. They had showered her with compliments and thanked her for her sacrifice, but the struggle was real, and she'd hoped she'd been, she would be able to endure this pain. The worst part of the situation was that Wayne remained unfazed by her behavior, and in fact continues, continued to hit on her relentlessly. What was wrong with men like this that thought everything with a vagina belonged to them? He, she knew, thanks to the any intel that Anifus had provided her, that he was a serial rapist. He was practically raping her with his eyes every time the curtain was pulled back. It terrified her that she might wake up in the middle of the night and there he would be right on top of her, forcing himself on her. Would she still be expected to just go along with the plan? Let him fulfill his violent fantasies, just allow him to violate her over and over? Wayne was still recovering and wasn't able to walk. Just yet. But he had solid arms and she imagined he might still be able to do it. He'd hold her down with his muscular body and she would still, she would be expected to just give in. Eve thought about what she might do in this situation often. She decided that if Wayne tried to force himself on her that she would let him. Then she would wait until he was asleep and that's when she would cut off his toxic manhood. The fascists wouldn't follow a eunuch. They were all a bunch of walking, talking penises looking for things to fuck. That's why they hated women so much. They feared the female power that they were too stupid to understand. Eve decided she would need to find something sharp to use in case she needed a weapon. 
this was a hospital. There had to be scalpels or something capable of cutting through a Nazi penis lying around s somewhere. She would have to keep an eye out for something to arm herself with next time they wheeled her out to therapy. Her secret chats with Anifas had made her feel like a warrior, but all warriors needed weapons. For now, her weapon would have to be her eyes and ears, which she would use to report back to the secret groups. She made very detailed notes about everything he did, which, admittedly, wasn't very exciting most of the time. He never left his phone unlocked, and most of what he said when he wasn't hitting on her... He was saying live to his audience on the internet, or to some fascist television network. Eve unlocked her phone and signed into the app that allowed her to chat with her Anifas comrades. Eve, resist. He's doing this awful stream. I think I need a weapon. Mung Pai 69, I'll protect you. Bootily fluid. Oh my god, you expire, inspire me so much. Hulk smash fash. Death to fascists. Z Dong, why do you need a weapon? Mung Pai, he better not try anything with you, or he'll have to deal, have me to deal with. Eve, I was thinking it would be funny to cut off his cock. Bootily fluid. LOL on stream. Hulk smash fash. Make him post op. Then they would really hate him. Mung pie. LOL. Z. What if we smuggle a weapon to you? What is security like there? I thought they had cops watching the room. Eve. No, not really. I mean, sort of they do, but it's not like they search any of the packages all the Nazis send him. Mung, what? WTF? Where are they sending him? Hulk, copies of Mein Kampf for him to sign? Mung, fucking pisses me off. Z, I know you don't want to dox yourself, but send me your info. In a private message, and I can make sure we get you something to protect yourself with. Eve's heart began to race. Up until now, she hadn't told the group her real name, or even which hospital she and Wayne were in. She knew that once she doxed herself, that the war would move from the virtual world and into real life. She was angry with herself for so for being so nervous to take the next step. So many had been willing to and had given their lives for their cause. She should do this. Her fingers were trembling and she could hear the sound of blood pumping in her ears. She steadied her hands and tapped the screen to create a new private message. <clears throat> Eve, okay, I'm here. Z, hey. I feel nervous, like the first time I sent someone nudes. You, you don't have to send nudes. Normally I wouldn't care, but I'm wrapped up like a mummy. I'm sure you're beautiful. Maybe I'll send you some I have saved. ID gaff. So, my name is Eve IRL. I'm Lawrence. No pressure, BT Dub. But like you've said, we must be ready to stand up to fascism, and it would be good to just make sure you you are safe. I can send you a package to be discreet so they never find anything, even if they do check. If for some reason they find something, they won't. 
you can just say you don't know where it came from. Eve resist. What would you send? Z. Nothing illegal. Just something to keep you safe. It's really no big deal. I think you should do it, though. Do what? Let me know where to send it. Oh, okay. I thought maybe you meant something else. Like what? Like ingl inglorious bastards it up. Well, you can't ex exactly do that with a hospital spoon. I would do it, by the way. People always say shit like, you would go back in time and kill baby Hitler. Like, there's more than one answer to that question. But now I guess there is. Because look at all the baby Hitlers running around now. I mean, I'm not, like, planning something. That's not what this is. I just want to feel safe, you know? It sucks being in here with him. Fucking scary. I bet. Okay, I'll send you my info. But this better not get me in trouble. It won't. This is not my first rodeo. No nudes if I get busted. Nice. Eve took a deep breath. Zedong Lawrence was the admin of one of the larger Antifus groups and had been organizing Antifus protests and online campaigns for years. <clears throat> even before the rise in fascism had even been on her radar. Eve had spent hours chatting with Lawrence since she had first found the resistance groups. He had been the first to deliver her story, or to believe her story, and he felt like they shared a bond. She knew she could trust him. Eve gave Lawrence the, same, the name of the hospital and the room number, and he would be sending a package soon. Eve made Lawrence swear to keep everything between them a secret and not do anything other than what they had discussed. If Wayne's location leaked out, then the hospital would be swarmed by armies of protesters and she just didn't have the energy for that sort of thing. Lawrence agreed. Wayne was wrapping up his live stream it was all very exciting, plotting against him like this, right under his nose. Very exciting. She hadn't been joking about sending nudes to Lawrence. She couldn't tell exactly what he looked like from the tiny photo in his avatar, but she could use some attention. Maybe she would make good on those nudes if Lawrence came through. He'd been extremely vague about what he was sending, and that was exciting too. She was literally a secret agent. End of chapter 18